Have you ever started a quilt and just didn't know how to finish it? Hi, my name is Fallon and I love to quilt. And in this video, we are going to talk about how to overcome quilting block on one of the projects you may have laying around that needs to get finished. So I have had these quilt blocks for a long time and there are a lot of them and I've started some of them. I had all the blocks cut and I just had trouble keeping motivated with finishing all the blocks. Even though the fabric was cut, I still just didn't keep up with finishing the blocks and getting the quilt together. Part of the problem was I wasn't motivated to work on the blocks because I didn't quite know how I wanted to bring the quilt top together. Trust me, I'm absolutely in love with these Ohio Star blocks. They are so pretty. I really love the colors and the only problem was, is it's hard to be motivated to work on something if you don't quite know what your vision is for the end project. But since I love these blocks so much, I really did want to see this quilt finished. What I decided to do was to lay out a few of them and take some photos. It can be really overwhelming when you have a lot of blocks to lay them all out somewhere, get a layout, and then just not really love that path, have to take them all down and start over. So I laid out a few without some sashing between the blocks, took a photo, and then I laid some out with some sashing around the blocks, took a photo, and then I laid some out with sashing and cornerstone blocks and took a photo. And what I decided to do was keep those photos on my phone so I could look out at them over a few days and decide which one I really liked. I also asked some of my friends which ones they liked and got some opinions as well. Now, after some time looking at the blocks over and over, I decided I really, really liked the look of the blocks with just a plain sashing. The reason I didn't love the sashing with the cornerstone is because I really love the look of these blocks and I didn't want anything to pull the eye away from the blocks. And I felt like the cornerstone kind of did that. Your eye would go from the block to the cornerstone and I really wanted the blocks to be the highlight. However, I did not love the fabric that I put down as the sashing. So I decided to lay it out with a different fabric that I had and I really liked it. Since there aren't many blocks that have a lighter background in this bunch, the sashing with the lighter color really helped the blocks pop even more, which was kind of what I was looking for. Now, I was really glad I used this method and I really hope you consider it too if you have a lot of blocks because since I just laid out a few and cut a little bit of the fabric, I didn't waste a whole lot of fabric cutting up a ton of sashing and borders only to decide I didn't love that color. So I think this worked really, really well for me. And hopefully it will help you if you have some blocks that you need to finish up. Now, since I have a plan, I can finally start bringing these together. And I mentioned that some of the blocks with the background have a lighter background and some a darker. So let me show you that. I grabbed two blocks that can really highlight that. So this one has much lighter fabric in the back and this one, some of the design is darker. So I separated these out and I'm going to lay these out on my design board, trying to get a nice balance of the lighter background and the darker background, and then I'll start bringing this top together. Now, before I show you the top all brought together, what I wanna do is show you how to make this block because surely after seeing all these blocks and seeing it laid out and come together, you may wanna make this block for yourself. So let's walk you through that. All right, so here is all the fabric you will need to make this block. You will need one dark three and a half inch square, and this will go on the center of the block. You will need two dark four and a half inch squares. Then we'll move on to the medium fabric. You will need one medium four and a half inch square, and you will need four medium two inch squares. And now for the light fabric. You will need one light colored four and a half inch square, four light two inch squares, and four rectangles that are two inch by three and a half inch. 
So I like to sew the easiest part to this block first, and that is bringing the corner squares together. And they have the rectangles and then the smaller two inch squares that are the medium fabric and the light fabric. These don't really have too much contrast between them like in some of my other blocks, but I am counting this as my medium fabric simply because the red is darker than the light here. If you can get a better contrast, that'll really help bring this block together just a little bit more, but I think this will still work. So the first thing we're going to do is sew the light and the medium fabric squares together. So I'm just gonna chain piece these together so I'm just sewing a quarter inch seam along one side with right sides together. And I'm not gonna cut the thread between sewing so I don't waste thread and it just makes this go a little bit quicker. I really love this version of the Ohio Star Block because it kind of makes a um, separate square in the background with the medium fabric the way it's placed and I really love the look of it. If you are loving this fabric that I'm using, it is Cranberries and Cream by Three Sisters for Moda Fabrics. I've had it for a while so I honestly don't know if you can still find the fabric easily but it is such a beautiful line of fabric. So I'm going to use my thread cutter here and then what I'm going to do is press the fabric toward the press the seam toward the medium fabric. So I'm going to finger press it first but then I am going to go ahead and add some heat to that now with my iron just to make sure it's laying nice and flat. All right and now I'm going to sew a rectangle to the bottom of them. I'm gonna keep the medium square over to my left and fold it down on top of that rectangle and sew a quarter inch seam. All right, so I'm gonna cut these apart. And then just because it lays flatter, I'm gonna press the seam toward the rectangle since I'm not pressing onto the seam here. And after I finger press it over, get the seam working in the direction I want, I will add some heat to that. And then we can move on to making the star points. All right, so I have these finished and just because it makes me feel good, to make sure I'm working this in the right way. I like to lay them out around the center square, that three and a half inch square, to make sure everything is coming together nicely. All right, so that is looking good. Now what we are going to do is make some half square triangles first. And we're going to take those two four and a half inch darker squares and lay them out. And then we're going to take the light and the medium four and a half inch squares and lay one on top of each of those right sides together. So we have a light square pa paired with the dark square, a medium square pa paired with the dark square. And if you don't like using um, any of the diagonal seam tape, seam guide tape, then you will want to draw a line corner to corner on your lighter fabrics here, on your light fabric and your medium fabric, because we're going to sew along each side of that drawn line. Now, if you're fine with using the diagonal seam tape, just line up the side of your quarter inch presser foot with one corner, and then the opposite corner is going to be lined up on your seam guide tape. And then we're just going to sew across there. Then we're gonna do that with the other set. All right, and then we need to get those stitches going along the other side of that imaginary drawn line, line up along the tape and sew.
All right, so I'm cutting those apart. And then before I cut these in half, I am going to press them real quick. All right, that just helps them lay nice and flat. And I'm gonna cut from the sides because I can see the threads a little better. I need to move these up out of the way. All right, so I'm just gonna line up my ruler along the diagonal here and just cut that in half. And then I'm going to press all of these toward the darker fabric. So I'm gonna finger press first. I highly encourage you to do that, especially here um, on that bias seam because this can really stretch out. I feel like giving it a quick finger press really helps not warp the fabric too much and stretch it out. So after I finger press them, I am gonna add some heat. All right, and so now we have four half square triangles. And what we're going to do is pair these up with opposite fabric. So we're gonna have a dark and light paired with a dark and a medium. So what you're going to do is place these right sides together where the seams are meeting up. And since we pressed these both toward the red fabric, they're gonna kind of push together nicely along that seam and you'll be able to feel how nice and snug they are together. They just kind of lock in place. And we're going to be sewing in the direction where we sew over the seam. So we're not sewing across seams again, corner to corner. We're going to sew in opposite directions. And what I like to do to make sure this is going to look right is I like to fold this over and see that I have the darker fabrics opposite to each other and then the medium and light opposite to each other to get that nice star point. So these are definitely laying correctly. So I'm going to line it up where my presser foot is along that point on one side, and then we're going to sew across to the point on the other side lined up with the tape here. All right, and let's get the other one ready so we can go ahead and chain piece that. Get these all nice and snug together. I can feel the seams matching up perfectly. So across there. All right, now let's sew in the other direction. Right, so I'm gonna cut these threads apart and then press these to get them laying nice and flat. All right, and so I'm gonna cut down the middle of the threads. All right, and then we'll have our star points. I'm gonna press these And we do have one more step. We need to trim these to three and a half inch squares. All right, so I'm gonna use a three and a half inch trim lock. There are diagonal lines going to corner to corner through here that I can line up with all the seams on this square and just make quick work of trimming this up. All right, so that is nice and trimmed up and it's going to go on here just like that where the medium fabric is facing in toward that center square. So I just need to trim all these the same way, all four of them. All right, so here is the block layout. Oh my God, I love this block so much. You can see how that medium fabric makes a secondary design around the Ohio star block. It makes kind of a square back there behind the star. I absolutely love this and it looks so good with that cranberries and cream fabric. So now we're just going to bring this block together. I kind of consider it 
a nine patch at this point. Um, that really makes it easy to sew together in my mind where I just take the top two squares, sew them together and kind of chain piece this into together into a net. So I sew those two together, right sides together. Don't cut the thread and sew the next two squares together. And then the final two. And then I press the seam toward the, the square that we made first in toward the middle square and then out toward the outer block in the final row. And then I just add on the final three blocks to each row. I like sewing it together this way because the net holding everything together makes it to where I don't mess up the orientation of the blocks. When I get to this middle one, I know that the medium fabrics are facing in toward that square. It just helps me make sure I don't have to rip seams here. All right, and then I'm gonna press the seam out toward the corner squares, in toward that center, and then out. And I'm gonna press all this, and all these seams will nest together and sew this block together very, very easy. All right, so you can kind of see how it's holding together there. It's kind of flopping around, so it's not holding completely straight. But that net that we sewed without cutting the threads is really keeping this all lined up nicely. So I'm just going to sew the rows together now, lay it together, and then I'll match up those seams. I can feel them come together. And since they're pressed in opposite directions, it'll reduce the bulk here. Definitely use pins if you want to here to keep everything lined up. So now that I have this final block sewn for my quilt top, I can bring it all together and I can't wait to share with you how it looks. Oh my gosh, the top is finally finished. I'm so glad I finally moved forward to bring all the blocks together and choose a way to bring this quilt top together. Okay, so here is the quilt top all finished and I'm so happy with how it turned out. I absolutely love it. I'm so glad I went with a lighter sashing. I feel like it really brightens up the quilt a little bit. While I love the colors of the fabric before I added on the sashing, it really has a lot of really subdued um, tones throughout the quilt. So I feel like the more white sashing really allows the blocks to pop. Let me know what you think in the comments though. Now, one thing I did was when I initially laid out the blocks where I wanted to place them, I took a photo of the layout. I like to do this one because I can refer back to it when I'm sewing the rows together to make sure I keep things in order, but two, when I look at the photo, I can often see things I don't see in the layout in front of me. Kind of seeing them all condensed and together really helped me notice that I had kind of a lot of darker, prints all together so I was able to shuffle them a little and have a more cohesive layout. All right so I hope you really enjoyed seeing this quilt come together. It's been a long time in the making. I'm so happy to finally have it come together and hopefully some of the sashing layouts and ideas using just a few blocks to get an idea of how the quilt will come together may help you bring some of your quilt blocks together that you have laying around.
What do you think of this quote? I like it. I like the red. Looks better than the album. Oh, dang, these two are the same and so close together. So? <laughs> Looks fine to me. <laughs> I don't really get, I don't think that matters. I will not work and I have to take it apart. Really? Just <laughs> one spot? <laughs> It looks perfectly fine. You sure? Yes. Yeah. I don't really think anybody's going to notice that if they're looking from it or looking at it, except that. Did you notice? No. Are you lying? No. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.